Hello, here's the news at this hour from T Solid TV. I'm Kende Duritilu. Here's some major headlines. Makinde to implement sustainable development goals in oil. Nigeria's VP promises justice for Porter's victims. Alstead's Mali president Keita returns to country. November 15, MPFL resumption date excites players. The news in details. Oyo State Governor Engineer Shane Makinde has assured residents in Oyo Town of his administration's resolution to give priority to the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs entrenched in his governance agenda. Governor Makinde stated this today through his special assistant on Sustainable Development Goals, Mr. Kunle Yusuf, while he embarked on an assessment tour in Atiba and Afijo towns. He assured them of integration of civil society organizations, community development councils, political leaders, market women, and representatives of various associations in Oyo Town into community-based initiative programs of this administration that the present government was poised to transforming the state economy and individual prosperity. He however noted that it was impossible to separate economic growth and individual prosperity from the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, adding that government has embarked on an assessment tour in all nooks and crannies of the state to know each local government's need. He commended the Governor of Royal State for the quick intervention in reconstructing the burnt Akeshon market. Meanwhile, Oyo youths campaigning against bad governance have suspended the ongoing protests to ensure proper coordination of the young people. The group in the communique expressed displeasure of the violence in Ojo area of Ibadan and condemned the Lagos massacre, which claimed lives and property. Kunli Udujari, the convener of the group, sympathized with the families of those that lost their lives in Ojo and prayed that God comforts their families while praying for quick recovery of those hospitalized. Kuli Udujari, in his statement, said Oyo youths are responsible and would ensure that protesters henceforth will be safe as measures are being put in place to protect lives of Nigerians and prevent further breakdown of law and order. Also emphasizing that Nigerian youths will not be tired to continue the protest until a better Nigeria is achieved. The group has, however, advised those blocking the roads not to embark on such anymore, but coordinate protests without making life miserable for the people. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo has promised justice for demonstrators who were killed or injured during protests that have rocked the country over the past few days. Witnesses have told newsmen that men in military camouflage shot at protesters on Tuesday evening in the biggest city, Lagos, adding that policemen were also killed in confrontations with protesters. Professor Shimbadio said today in a series of tweets that the pain of these terrible events is palpable in our towns and cities and some losses are irreplaceable, but we can and will get justice for all of them. His reassurance follows worldwide condemnation of the crackdown on protesters who initially wanted police reforms but have broadened their demand to include reforms to the way the country is run. However, Amnesty International has said at least 12 people were killed by soldiers and police in two locations in the city, although Nigeria's army has dismissed the reports as fake news. The vice president said he had paid hospital visits to some of the victims. The Minister of Works and House in Babatunde Fashola yesterday told the Senate that the federal government owes construction firms handling 711 road projects across the country 392 billion naira. The debt, according to the minister, was higher than the 276 billion naira proposed as budgetary allocation for road projects in 2021. Fashala, who stated this yesterday in Abuja while defending the 2021 budget of his ministry before the Senate Committee on Works, said 6.62 trillion naira 
was needed by the federal government to fund the 711 road projects across the country. The minister, however, said the resources to achieve that were not available now, hence the need to prioritize the very important ones. He, however, explained to the committee that in order to remedy the situation, the 711 projects had been categorized into four different areas of funding and execution. Meanwhile, the chairman of the committee, Senator Adamu Alero, suggested to the minister to look into pension funds for some of the road projects. The news on T-Solid TV will be back right after this. The news so far. Welcome back, and now to some foreign stories. Mali's ex-president Ibrahim Boubacar Keita returned to the Sahel state yesterday after leaving to seek medical treatment following his ouster in an August coup. An airport official said the 75-year-old former leader landed in the capital Bamako in the evening, his first time back in Mali since he departed for the United Arab Emirates on September the 5th. It was reported that young army officers launched a coup against Keita on August 18 after mass protests against his leadership triggered by frustrations over a change of issues, over a range of issues, including perceived corruption and Mali's long-running jihadist insurgency. The military detained Keita for over two weeks, but he was released after he suffered a minor stroke, according to his doctors. AFP journalists on Wednesday witnessed a convoy enter Keita's residence in Bamako shortly after his flight landed, while a few dozen supporters welcomed him home with chants of long leave IBK. Meanwhile, Thailand has lifted a ban on public gatherings after an emergency decree failed to put a stop to mass anti-government protests in Bangkok. Thousands have showed up for protests in recent days despite the decree which banned gatherings of more than four and put in place an evening curfew. A government statement said it was revoking the measures as the serious situation had eased where Thailand is currently seeing some of its biggest protests in years. However, protesters, many of whom are students, are demanding amendments to the constitution, a new election and an end to the harassment of rights activists and state critics, adding that resignation of Prime Minister Payuth Chan Ocha, the former army chief who seized power in 2014 coup and was later appointed as Premier after controversial elections last year. And in sports, Nigerian professional football league stars are excited after the announcement of the resumption of the league for November 15, 2020. The executive committee of the Nigerian Football Federation had on Tuesday, after meeting via video conference, approved the resumption of the 2020-2021 NPFL season any time from November 15. Speaking on the proposed resumption of the league, Nasarawa United captain Emmanuel Makama says he's excited to see the league get a resumption date and can't wait to be on the field. However, newly signed Quarra United Brazilian winger Lucas Alves is also excited about the prospect of playing in the Nigerian league. Alvaro Morata struck twice as Juventus made light of Cristiano Ronaldo's absence to get their Champions League campaign off the mark with a 2-0 win at Dynamo Kiev. Spain's Morata opened the scoring just after the break when he tapped in off a rebound and nodded in a second 
with six minutes to put Juventus second in Group G behind Barcelona, who beat Hungarian Minos, Perrin Kravos, 5 1. Portugal captain Ronaldo and US midfielder Weston McKennie would miss the trip to the Ukraine after testing positive for coronavirus, with Alexandro and Mati de Ligt out injured. But Andrew Pello, who is 41, got his European coaching debut off to a winning start after veteran Dynamo coach Makria Luseku, who gave the Italian his first serious start as a Brescia player 25 years ago. However, Juventus will next play Barcelona on October the 28th in Turin, with both teams on the point. With that, we've come to the end of the news. A recap of the headlines. Makinde to implement sustainable development goals in Oyo. Nigeria's VP promises justice for protest victims. Ousted Mali President Keita returns to country. And in sports, November 15 MPFL resumption date excites players. Please do not forget to always adhere to COVID-19 safety measures. The news was compiled by Hope TGOK. I'm Kendi, Druitilu. Good day, and thank you for watching. Thank you.